Dr. Robert Donegan joins me now, oncologist at GBMC, the Berman Cancer Institute. Good morning, Doctor. Great to have you on. Can you explain exactly what non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is? So non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, as the governor said, is a cancer. It's a cancer of the lymph system, which is the immune system that we have to help protect us from getting infections or to fight infections. So obviously there's a difference then between non-Hodgkin's and Hodgkin's lymphoma, right? What's the difference there? Between yeah, there, there sure is. So Hodgkin lymphoma or Hodgkin's disease actually tends to occur in younger people predominantly, whereas non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is much more common as we get older. Um, there's about 70,000 cases of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma diagnosed in the United States every year. Uh, so it's actually more common than Hodgkin's disease as well. Is either one of them worse than the other? Uh, overall, I think Hodgkin disease, uh, Hodgkin lymphoma, is uh, a bit better, a uh, higher likelihood of being cured. Um, but non-Hodgkin lymphoma can oftentimes be cured as well. So it affects your ability to what, fight off diseases then and fight off infections, essentially? Yeah, it, it, the, so the disease itself can do that, but also the treatments that are necessary in order to hopefully eradicate the disease can also temporarily make somebody more vulnerable to infections, too. So, But if you have this kind of cancer, are you, are you more prone to getting infections like colds or viruses because, because of the cancer? Yeah, you sure are, uh, especially, again, uh, because of the treatment that can uh, sort of knock one of the legs out of your immune system while, while fighting the, the disease. Does that have an effect on the chemotherapy that, that, that you give the, uh, the patients? Um, no, it doesn't. Um, I think the, the chemotherapy is, is pretty standard. It can only, it, sometimes it can affect how the treatment is done because if somebody gets an infection while on treatment, we mm -hmm. may have to delay treatment, for example, but, but ultimately we can treat through these infections. The governor described it as an aggressive form of cancer, what the doctors told him, obviously. If it's an aggressive form of cancer and that he found out, uh, you know, before he went on his trade mission to Asia a couple of weeks ago that he had a lump, it, 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 it manifested itself in the form of a lump. Is there any idea of how long he had it, and does that make a difference when it comes to trying to cure it or treating it? Sure. So it's probably been growing for a matter of many weeks to a few months, uh, the, this type of lymphoma. Um, and the, you know, the, the irony is that the more aggressive the lymphoma, the greater the response to treatment. Because there are lymphoma is actually really about 50 different subtypes of diseases, and some of which are really slow-growing and also are less responsive to therapy. So the, the more aggressive the lymphoma paradoxically, the more likely they are to respond. Oh, to interesting. Okay, so you actually would rather it be more aggressive then? Well, if you're looking to get rid of it for good, uh, you're more likely to get rid of it for good if it's an aggressive lymphoma. So we, th we hear stage three, and, and we think, I don't know, five stages. Is that typically how cancer is done, and is lymphoma different in that aspect? Yeah, you know, the staging can be a bit misleading, because when people hear higher stages, stage three, stage four, they think, oh my gosh, we're getting to the world of incurability. And, and that's true for most cancers, but it's different for lymphoma. You can have stage four lymphoma and still have the chance to be cured, and that's not so true for stage four prostate cancer, breast cancer, and so on. So, so the stage speaks to where it is, but it doesn't necessarily uh, tell the whole tale. When, and what is typical, I know you can't get specifically into the, into the governor's um, case, but typically for someone who has stage three non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the, the survival rate? Well, it, again, it varies on the type. Uh, he has an aggressive form, and if you look at uh, uh, the overall survival for, for aggressive lymphomas, uh, somewhere in the 60 to 70 percent range, that's where we, uh, we, we tend to think of things. That's, that's the, the, the long-term uh, survival and, frankly, the, the, the cure rate for yeah. this disease. Well, that's, that's, pretty, that's a pretty good rate. Then. I, all right, before I let you go, I mean, he's the governor of Maryland, obviously, has an important job. Typically, 18 weeks of chemotherapy, that, that seems like a lot. He's going to go through you know, highs and lows. How do patients respond usually to this form of chemotherapy? And you know, do they miss work? Or are they are they tired? Are they incapacitated? In just a general sense of how patients typically respond to this kind of treatment. So, in my practice, I encourage my patients to work. And I think it's very important for patients to be able to work through treatment. I think psychologically, it's very good to be engaged in other things. I think it probably makes the experience of treatment better for the patient. So, I think his desire to stay engaged as the governor is a really healthy thing to do. Um, there are days that he's going to have to slow down. He's not going to work on the days that he's being treated because he's going to be spending those times in the hospital or in the clinic. 
Uh, there may be days after treatment where he feels a bit more tired and maybe a bit nauseated and may would be, be better served working from home. Um, but I, I think it's going to be important for him to continue to stay engaged and to work. I think he's going to do better in the long run psychologically and probably physically as well. Dr. Donegan, great to have you on. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Let's, let's all wish him well. Absolutely. Dr. Robert Donegan, GNBC oncologist at the Berman Cancer Institute here on WBAL.